the CIA and MI6 created mm -hmm. ISIS by the same guy mm -hmm. that we were just talking about in the gray zone. This is at his personal yeah. sub stack called Active Measures. He published it exclusively here. So please support him here if you can subscribe. You can subscribe monthly. But he says that within 24 hours of the horrific mass shooting in Moscow's Brokus City Hall on March 22nd, which left at least 137 yep. innocent people dead and more than 60 critically wounded. It's a terrorist attack. U.S. officials blamed the slaughter on ISIS-K, Daesh's South Central Asian branch. That's kind of funny. For many, the attributions celebrity, uh, celebrity uh, raised suspicions that Washington was seeking to decisively shift Western public and Russian government focus away from the actual culprits be that Ukraine and or Britain, Kiev's most proxy sponsor, or Kiev, or however, whatever they want to call themselves this week. Full details of how the four shooters were recruited, directed, armed, and financed, and who by are yet to emerge. Again, this was written on April 4th, so two weeks ago. <coughs> yeah. Plus All right. The Kremlin claims to have unearthed evidence that Kiev's the Kiev's SBU were the ultimate architects, which the agency denies, charging that Russian authorities knew knew about the attack and permitted it to happen. Hmm. And where have we heard that before? In order to ramp up its assault on Ukraine, uh, these guys they accuse everybody of that which they are guilty constantly, and I'm talking about October seventh. And then there, there being a claim that Israel knew it happened a year in advance, now they're claiming and make, and attaching the same accusation to Russia to muddy it down now. Uh, also, it's been reported that the killers received funds from a cryptocurrency wallet belonging to ISIS Tajikistan wing, which is also interesting. And allegedly, allegedly, all this is allegedly. And according to... What wing? So and so, Tajikistan. Is that like a? Oh, I mean, it does sound like a delicious chicken. Whatever. I knew you were going to say that. Tajikistan wing. Whatever the mm. truth of the matter, it is certain that the four individuals responsible had no clue who or what they what truly sponsored their monstrous actions. Contrary to the group's main, mainstream portrayal, as inspired by fanatic extreme religious fundamentalism. ISIS are primarily guns for hire. At any given time, they act at the behest of an array of international donors bound by common interests. Funding, weapons, and orders reach its fighters circuitously and opaquely. There is almost invariably layer upon layer of cutouts between the perpetrators of an attack claimed by the group and its ultimate orchestrators and financiers. Given that ISIS-K is currently arrayed against China, Iran, and Russia, where did we see that before? In other words, the U.S. empire's primary adversaries, it is incumbent to revisit their parent group's origins. Emerging, emerging seemingly out of nowhere just a decade ago, before dominating mainstream media headlines and Western public consciousness for several years before vanishing again, at one stage, the group occupied vast swaths of Iraqi and Syrian territory, declaring an Islamic state, which issued its own currency, passports, and vehicle registration license plates. Did you, did you know this? Um, had you, vaguely. Had you heard of this? Did you know this? That ISIS literally mm -hmm. like tried to declare themselves a country? Mm-hmm. Is okay. this when they bought all those Toyotas? The Caliphate? Somebody That's said all those to driving me Macy. All those Toyotas. Mm. Good, good call, Macy. Yeah. There, there we go. Was that? Right. Have you have you seen that Shane Gillis bit about the the ISIS yes. Toyota? Yes. One of the best. One of his best. Yes, ones. the one with the dealership is called ISIS Toyota before <laughs> before ISIS yeah. becomes a thing, and they have to change. It, and he doesn't want to change the lean name in, of the dealership. Lean into it. Lean no. into it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Jihad a good time, dude. I brought an AK. <laughs> Jihad a good time at ISIS Motors. 
Yes. Uh, yeah. Devastating military uh, interventions independently launched by the U.S. and Russia wiped out that demonic construct in 2017. The CIA and MI6 were no doubt immensely relieved. <laughs> After all, extremely yeah. awkward questions about how precisely ISIS came to be com were comprehensively extinguished. Hmm. As yeah. we shall see, the terror group and its caliphate did not emerge in the manner of lightning on a dark night, but due to dedicated, determined policy hatched in, yes, go figure, London and Washington and implemented by their spying agencies. Hmm. Well, what was the thing Joe had it in the video where it was like when they when they asked what the Israeli like what Mossad translates to or whatever was like what was it Israeli secret intelligence service right I -S -S. ISIS right right yes and then uh, what we calling it ISIS and ISIL and all that. Like it changed names three or four times before they stuck with them. Steph Gee has, yeah. has it. Uh, yep. Got that. You got it nailed. Exactly. Knesset. Continuingly hostile. So here we go. Yeah. Rand Corporation, we know, is a highly influential Washington, D.C. headquartered think tank. Bankrolled to the tune of almost $100 million annually by the Pentagon and other U.S. government entities. It regularly disseminates recommendations on national... National security, foreign affairs, military strategy, and covert and overt actions overseas. These pronouncements are more often than not subsequently adopted as policy. They're like the ALEC of of um, internet of global policy. ALEC does that for like domestic policy and like Christian um, type of conservatism and um, control over American citizens. <coughs> Rand Corporation, they give their global assessment, their global threat assessments. For example, and Kit, Kit adds, a July 2016 Rand paper on the unthinkable prospect of quote-unquote war with China forecast for a need to fill mm -hmm. Eastern Europe with U.S. soldiers in advance of a hot conflict with Beijing as Russia would undoubtedly side with its neighbor and ally in such a dispute. It was therefore considered necessary to tie down Moscow's forces at its borders. Six months later, scores of NATO troops duly allied, arrived in the region, ostensibly to counter, quote-unquote, Russian aggression. Ah, how about that? Yeah. Right? Yeah, us two animators. Internet is glitching everywhere. Right, we're getting booted and... So yes, Kit... At Kit Clarenberg, by the way, you should tweet to Elon Musk and at X support uh, to restore at Kit Clarenberg's account, please. Bring Kit, free Kit Clarenberg's Twitter yeah. account. <laughs> All right. Similarly, in 2019, Rand published <laughs> Extending Russia. Russian scum. Come on. It set Russian out. scum. Yeah, those guys. It set out a, poss a range of possible means to bait Moscow into overextending itself so as to undermine the regime's stability. These methods including, mm. included providing lethal aid to Ukraine. Have we done that? Did we just give them $60 billion last night? Well, not exactly last yeah. night, but we're going to this week once Joe Biden signs it into law. Increasing support yeah. for the U.S. Syrian rebels. Anybody heard of the White Helmets? <laughs> Promoting regime you think change. You just fell out of a coconut tree. Promoting regime change in Belarus. They've done that. Exploiting tensions in the Caucasus. We've seen that as well. Neutralizing Russian yep. influence in Central Asia and Moldova. Most of this came to pass thereafter. So basically, they're writing military policy. Yeah. In this context. Rand's November 2008 Unfolding the Long War makes for disquieting reading. It explored ways the U.S. global war on terror could be prosecuted once coalition forces formally left Iraq under terms of a withdrawal agreement inked by Baghdad and Washington that same month. What month? When was that? 2008. This development, by definition... 2008? This development, by definition, threatened Anglo-Dominion over Persian Gulf oil and gas resources, we know, 
is not allowed, which would remain a strategic priority when the occupation was officially mm. over. Uh huh. Bye, Mimi. Yeah, member berries. That's wonderful. So he says, quote, so Rand had declared then that this priority will interact strongly with that of prosecuting the long war. The think tank went on to propose a divide and rule strategy to maintain U.S. hegemony in Iraq despite the power vacuum created by withdrawal. Wait, what? How? Yeah. Under its auspices, Washington would exploit fault lines between Iraq's Salafi jihadist groups. Not that any of them could be potentially like Democrat, like want to govern themselves and be like normal civilians. They're all jihadists, right? That yeah. all these Salafi jihadist groups would turn turn them against each other and dissipate the energy on internal conflicts. Man, that sounds like what they've been trying to do to the left for three years. While also supporting mm -hmm. authoritative authoritative Sunni governments against a continuous continuously <laughs> continuingly hostile Iran, which was always the ultimate goal because they are also well-funded, I would guess, by APAC. I'm sure we can look into that funding. This strategy, quote, relies heavily on covert action, information operations, unconventional warfare, and support to indigenous security forces. Indigenous. <laughs> the U.S. and its local allies could use the nationalist jihadists to launch proxy campaigns to discredit transnational jihadists in the eyes of the local populace. This would be an inexpensive way of buying time until the U.S. can return to it, its full attention to the region. They're, they're saying mm -hmm. it right now out loud. They're saying the quiet part out loud. U.S. leaders could also choose to capitalize on the sustained Shia-Sunni conflict by taking the side of conservative Sunni regimes against Shiite empowerment movements in the Muslim world. Nice that the Rand Corporation at least acknowledges the difference between Shia and Sunni. And then they yeah. published this motherfucking thing. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Oive? I'm not going to give this an Oive, but this is the a Rand Corporation <laughs> chart, an incomprehensible graphic from the Rand report called The Current Dominant Factors and Examples of How U.S. Actions Can Be Represented. Look at what's going on there. You've literally got a section that says perceived bias toward Israel. Hmm. Well, no. All right. Nice if they care about someone, I guess. Great danger. No. So... It was Ugh. that CIA and MI6 began supporting Sunni nationalist jihadists throughout West Asia at the suggestion of Rand Corporation that obviously has deep ties to CIA. The next year, Bashar mm -hmm. Assad rejected a Qatari proposal to route Doha's vast gas reserves directly to Europe via a $10 billion, 1,500-kilometer-long pipeline spanning Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Syria, and Turkey. As extensively documented in WikiLeaks, released diplomatic cables, thank you, Julian Assange, U.S., Israeli, and Saudi intelligence immediately decided to overthrow Assad by fomenting a local Sunni rebellion and started financing opposition groups for the purpose. I'm going to stop mm. right there for a second. Fomenting Discord, you say? Fomenting Discord. Yes. Um, they were fomenting Discord. Mm. They try to undermine, but Assad must go, right? They've been trying to undermine yep. Assad and get rid of him because of this. A pipeline. <laughs> Look at how far back this effort became turbocharged in October 2011 with MI6 redirecting weapons and extremist fighters from Libya to Syria in the wake of Gaddafi's televised murder. Who led that Murder. revolution, oh, by the way? Fuck. I can't ah. believe you've done this. Yes, the CIA oversaw that operation using British intelligence as an arm's length cutout to avoid notifying Congress of its machinations. 
Only mm. in June 2013, with then President Barack Obama's official authorization, did the agency's cloak Thanks, and dagger Obama. did the agency's cloak and dagger connivances in Damascus become formalized and later admitted under the name Timber Sycamore. If you want to learn more about Timber Sycamore, ask our friend Steve Poikin about Timber Sycamore. He'll tell you all about it. And here's a New York Times article about well, the thing well, about sycamores is oh, it's great. The behind the sudden death of a yep. billion dollar secret CIA war in Syria. Even the New York Times had to publish and admit this shit. Okay. There's the Toyota trucks you were talking about. Yep. <laughs> he says Toyota. At this time, Western officials universally referred to their Syrian proxies as moderate rebels. Yet Washington was well aware its surrogates were dangerous extremists seeking to carve a fundamentalist caliphate out of the territory they occupied. An August 2012 U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency report released under freedom of information laws observes that events in West Asia were taking a clear sectarian direction with radical Salafist groups, the, ma the major forces driving the insurgency in Syria. So what does that mean? These factions included Al-Qaeda's Iraqi wing, AQI, and its umbrella offshoot, ISI, the Islamic State of Iraq. The pair went on to form ISIS, a prospect that the Defense, the, the Defense Intelligence Agency report not only predicted, but seemingly endorsed. Here's the quote yeah. from the report. If the situation unravels, there's the possibility of establishing a declared or undeclared <laughs> Salafist principality in eastern Syria, this is exactly what the supporting powers to the opposition want in order to isolate the Syrian regime. ISI could also declare an Islamic State through its union with other terrorist organizations in, Islam in Iraq and Syria, which will create great danger. Will Robinson. Danger, Will Robinson. Despite such grave concerns, the CIA continued to dispatch unaccountably vast shipments of weapons and money to Syria's moderate rebels, <laughs> well knowing that this aid would inevitably ding, 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 what would it, what would it end up? End up in ISIS's hands! Yes. Mm -hmm. Moreover, Britain concurrently ran secret programs costing millions to train opposition paramilitaries in the art of killing while providing medical assistance to wounded jihadists. London also donated multiple ambulances purchased from Qatar to armed groups in the country. Wait, didn't that wasn't that group called the White Helmets? Like that. Leaked documents. Only if you sniff a backpack once or twice. Maybe leaked yeah. documents indicate at the risk of indicate the risk of equipment and personnel from these efforts being lost to Al Nusra, ISIS, and other extremist groups in West Asia was judged unavoidably high by British intelligence. They knew that there was a good chance that these would fall into these people's hands. Yet there was no con concomitant great band name. By the way, you had two great band names in this article already. You've got Moderate Rebels great punk band there was already a show um, you know look max then, blumenthal max and and ben norton used yeah. to have a channel and a show called modern rebels a podcast that was outstanding it's one and of the first leaked, things i found leaked out. documents is another good band name um, oh i thought you were going to say al nusra yeah. isis and other extremist groups <laughs> i mean that's that's their opener that's the leaks documents open. that's a punk band if i ever um, heard one right <laughs> Yet, there was no concomitant strategy for countering this hazard at all, and the operations continue to pace. No surprise. It's almost as if and training, and, almost as if training and arming ISIS was precisely the desired outcome of MI6. Yeah. And a mayor stating what Jimmy Dore did, we are the terrorists. Right? Um, yeah. Terror. Golden Monarch, that chart looks like a nuclear bomb that designed chart. Yep. It's really bad. All right. 
So that's Kit's active measures. Go go subscribe there. Go support him. KitClarenberg.com. That's just his his URL. He bought the personalized one just like we did. <laughs> if you have well, we've had plenty of longies, but if you have not already and you are of a means and able to and are getting value here, we do this on a volunteer basis and on a user funded basis. So whatever you can do to help us. There's some ways to support monthly subscriptions on Patreon, Substack, one-time donations on Rumble, Cash App, and then we're going to put up a QR code, which already is up or was up, uh, and here. There we go. That's for Jesse's computer fund. Probably Mac hooked us up on Friday night on the Jesse stream, and... Uh, and we're at 47% right now. We're almost halfway to our $1,000 goal to help Jesse there. Uh, we'll get to Jesse coming to New York City. I know we talked about that last week. So 